conference call. Today's conference is being recorded. At this time for opening remarks and introductions, I would like to turn the conference over to Dave Schaller. Please go ahead, sir. Thank you very much. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the UFC 159 media conference call. UFC 159 takes place on this Saturday from the Prudential Center in Newark, New Jersey. Today we are joined on the call by UFC light heavyweight champion John Jones, challenger Chael Sonnen, and top middleweight Alan Belcher and Michael Bisbee. UFC President Dana White is on a plane and will be unable to make this call, so I'll take for him. Also, folks, several of our main event competitors are taking planes today to the East Coast. So today's call will last about 35 minutes. We do encourage you to get your questions in when you are prompted. At this time, let's go ahead and take the first question. Thank you. As a reminder, if you would like to ask a question, please signal by pressing star 1 on your telephone keypad. If you're using a speakerphone, please make sure your mute function is turned off to allow your signal to reach our equipment. Once again, that's star 1 to ask a question. And we'll go first to AJ Perez with Sportsports.com. Hey, this is for Chael. Um, I, I, Dana White told us last uh, a few days ago that you had kind of had a run-in with a fan at the tough finale. Could you talk a little, little bit about that and what transpired and kind of how, how that went down? You know, I really can't. I don't know a ton about it. There was a lot of people around, uh, and, I, and, and my, my focus was just in, in five different directions, uh, including on him. U ultimately, uh, you know, he got upset, and, and he, he went to take a punch, and security grabbed him, and, and they took him out. I didn't miss a beat. I mean, I was, I was, I was doing a few other things. Uh, I didn't like seeing him have to leave. He had, uh, he had very expensive and good seats, and I, I wish he would have seen the show, but, uh, you know, at the same time, he, he, he can't do that behavior. Exactly. Do you see yourself, you know, do you, I know you, you, you don't want to become a target, but obviously you're a very well-spoken and you can promote, and sometimes, I guess, maybe in this case, it rubs someone the wrong way. Do you ever think about that perception that maybe some people have of you? Well, I don't promote fights, but I do pick fights, and yes, I do. I am well aware of that perception, and I enjoy it. And we'll take our next question from Michael Cohen with the Seriously Coast Standard. Hey, this question is for John. Uh, John, this is about as close as you can get to fighting in your home state. You know, what would it mean if you could ever eventually fight in New York and, and have your home fans see you up close? Oh, man, uh, Madison Square Garden is a, uh, it's a uh, it's like the mecca place for fighting, I believe. You know, like Muhammad Ali got to fight there. Um, Mike Tyson got to fight there. And I think it's like, uh, I just think it's like a surreal place to be. I'm actually honored that I get to do the um, the open workouts at the Garden because it's, it's just a dream of mine. So um, to fight there, it will mean a lot to me, and I uh, can't wait for the possibility. With the success that you and your brothers have had, what's the support been like in the central New York area with all the ties to Syracuse and Binghamton and Rochester? Man, it, it's phenomenal, man. It's um. It's surreal. You know, sometimes I don't think I realize how much of what we have. You know, I don't really, um, you know, I, it's just, it's huge. You know, it's bigger than, it's bigger than I, I have, I'm, I'm able to, like, stop and, and realize. Um, and it's a great thing. You know, I think when I retire from fighting, I'll open a gym, probably in the Rochester area, because it's, it is where I was born. And I think I have a pretty, uh, pretty successful program. So, yeah, it, it's just, it's overwhelming. You know, Syracuse works heavily, uh, so I get the football fans supporting me, and uh, and they get, you know, MMA fans. It, it, it's it's a, it's a lot of cross-marketing going on between me and my brothers. And last one real quick, John. You know, this is the time of year again where the State Assembly has that chance to pass the vote, you know, and, and you know, there's been talk of that Madison Square Garden fight in November. What's your thought process this time around? You, you're really hoping this is it? Yeah, man, it will be awesome if, if they go through with it. And um, if, uh, if I come out of this fight uh, unscathed, uh, I would love and uh, get right back to camp and uh, you know be be active. Thanks, John, for, for the November card. Yeah, thank you. 
as a reminder to our phone audience, that is star one at this time if you have any questions. And we'll go next to Damon Martin with BleacherReport.com. Uh, yeah, first question is for John. Uh, you know, John, throughout your career, you've really avoided getting into emotional uh, battles with your opponents, no matter how much they tried to goad you in, outside of maybe Rashad Evans, and we kind of know why that happened. Has this fight with Chell ever become personal? I know Dana made that comment, I think it was last week, where he said you told him you really wanted to hurt Chell and, and things like that. Can you kind of expand and talk about that a little bit? Yeah, I really don't want to talk about the comment. It's something that I said. Um, but my emotions aren't, like, overly involved. Well, actually, no, they're really not. You know, I, uh, I've studied Chell a lot. I study his interviews. I study his personality. And, and everything, and, you know, he's being himself. I'm comfortable with him. I'm, I'm, I've familiarized myself with who he is and what he needs to do and what he tries to be. And uh, it is just another situation. Uh, when I get in the fight, you know, I never fight um, over-aggressively. I always stay calm and relaxed and composed, and uh, and that's what it will be. You know, no matter what I say before a fight, what my opponent says, no matter if I appear to let someone in my head, which I enjoy doing because, I mean, that's that's what the project is. You know, it's a huge homework assignment that I have, so he should be in my head. Uh, but when it comes to fight night, you know, it's it's relaxation, it's beauty, it's peace, it, it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's martial arts is what God told me on this planet to do. And you've, you've said, obviously, in the past that you have long-term goals of, you know, becoming one of the greatest champions, if not the greatest champion in the past, or in the future, excuse me. Uh, what do you feel like the fight with Shale does for your legacy? Uh, this fight with Shale, it, it, uh, it ties me with Peter Ortiz. As far as the, the, the career, the, 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 the greatest light heavyweight champion as far as career defenses? Yeah. Okay. Thanks a lot. Thank you. As a reminder, that is star one if you would like to ask a question. And we'll go next to Dale D'Souza with the MMA Corner. All right, all right. Uh, first question for John. Uh, John, uh, we've seen a lot in the past, uh, you know, and as far as Chael's fights, I mean, like, he loves to use his wrestling, and uh, if he sees an opening for a submission, he'll obviously take it. I mean, has his wrestling been a concern for you at all this entire camp? No, I um, I wouldn't say I'm concerned with his wrestling. You know, I, I think I've worked on my bottom game a lot more than I have in any other camp. Uh, because um, where I've fought in lots of rest thrillers in the past, I think I have been able to mesmerize them and make them not use their wrestling, where Chael is a guy who shoots without really putting much thought into it. He almost does it automatically. He has great timing. Uh, so I have come, become comfortable with the idea of fighting off my back, and uh, I'm prepared to do so. But, you know, I, the storyline is always his wrestling his wrestling, his wrestling. It was that way with Max Yashenko, Ryan Bader, Rashad Evans. And I don't think no one respects the wrestling at all. No one respects it at all. Um, so, uh, you know, I have a lot of pride going into this fight, and maybe I'll take him down more than he'll take me down. You never know, you know. So I just, I just, I'm excited to go out there and prove my critics wrong again about me being this inferior wrestler. I don't think people give... Uh, my junior college accolade respect, and I'm going to earn respect in this fight. I have great takedowns, and I'm excited to see what Cho has learned off of his back. You know, even the ground upon. You know, Cho doesn't really damage anyone with his ground upon. Uh, Anderson's face was fine. All of, all of his opponents' face was fine. I think Brian Vick was the only guy who made bleed with his ground upon. Everyone that I take down, I cut them open right away. So I don't think anyone respects. My grappling, my ground upon, or my wrestling. And I'm excited, and I'm excited to go out there and uh, show people what I do. Uh, excellent, John. And uh, question for Chael. Uh, Chael, uh, you know, obviously there's been a lot of talk about this fight, uh, both good and bad, as it relates to, uh, you know, uh, your challenging uh, John. Uh, do you feel any pressure at all uh, to really find the critics that say, that you really don't deserve to be in there with John. Uh, yeah, yeah. There's 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 always pressure. Uh, you know that pressure is earned. If you've never done anything 
in this sport, you're not going to have any pressure. If you won a whole bunch of fights and been, been a marquee fighter, you're you're going to move to the top. You know, I want to talk about something John said earlier, though. I, I always find it, uh, you, you know, as great as John is, I don't think he understands how good he is. You know, for him to pay tribute to Mike Tyson and Muhammad Ali earlier was a very nice thing for him to do. The reality is John Jones could beat up Mike Tyson and Muhammad Ali in the same day. And when he, when he says he wants to be the best ever, John, newsflash, buddy, you are the best. And, and as far as tying Tito Ortiz, yeah, maybe, maybe he had a couple of more wins, but he hasn't had the competition that you faced. And, uh, you know, that's not a secret. I, I'm not going to degrade John or what he's done. He's the world champion. He's the best in the weight class, and, and he's the best the weight class has ever seen. So if you're asking me if I feel pressure, yeah, there's a lot of pressure. Uh, you know, this, this, this is a tough guy in a tough environment, but, you know, that's the sport. That's what it is. And it, 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 you're saying I don't deserve the shot or however. Look, look I don't earn title shots. Title shots earn me. I, I don't go after main events. Main events come after me. Uh, and that's it. And whether I, I earned it or not or, or, or deserve it, I, I'm a Republican. I don't talk in those terms. I take what I want, and that's it. All right, excellent, Joe. Thanks, thanks, guys. As a reminder to our one at this time, if you have any questions, and we'll go next to Stephen Morocco with MMAJunkie.com. Hey, John. Pretty uh, nice uh, things, Chill just had to say about you. What do you What do you make of those? Do you think he's uh, think they're genuine, or you think he's trying to sort of play play games? I, I can't afford to to worry. Or, or or feel any type of feelings of him try, being kind or anything, you know. The, the thought of someone taking my nickname away from me, and that nickname is Champs, um, I take that very personal. I take that with a grain of salt. Um, and, uh, and that's the way I need to keep my attitude. I need to keep my focus. Someone's trying to take away my dream. Um, you know, the thought of going home without my belt, uh, it, it keeps me angry. It keeps me And uh, so... Uh, if someone says something nice about me. And a quick follow-up. Do you have any uh, number in mind when you think of the number of title defenses uh, you'd like to have as ch champion before you maybe start to think about other things? For instance, maybe a move up to the heavyweight division? Well, um, one thing I've been contemplating is, is first, uh, tying Tito Ortiz, and then um, and then uh, and then uh, establishing that record of the most wins in my next fight, maybe in in November, and after that fight in November, uh, entertaining super fights and heavyweight fights. Would the would the Anderson Silva fight be the first super fight you you target? I said what I said. Okay, thanks. Thank you. As a reminder, if you have a question, please press star one. We'll go next to Jordan Curran with MMA Plus. Hi, this is MMA Plus. Uh, I've just got a quick question for Chael. Uh, Chael, I understand you've been doing a, a lot of training with Luke Barnett recently. He's a big name over here in UK and I just wondering if you could talk about the work you've been doing with him. Yeah, I've worked out with him every day. I think I'm hearing an English accent there. We also got uh, John McGuire out here uh, in Oregon. And yeah, we're working hard. You know, I, I never thought that a reach mattered. Uh, uh, but it's a problem. You know, I, I, I felt it going with Luke, and, and, and there is something there, and I'm glad I got to work in. Uh, but yeah, he's great. He works hard. He goes twice a day, every day. Uh, he, there's really nothing more you can ask for a workout partner. Thanks a lot. That's great. And we'll take our next question from Dave Debert with Post Media News. Hi, you guys. Thanks for the call. Uh, first one uh, from Michael. Um, you uh, you talked recently um, about uh, about some nerve uh, issues uh, in in your neck and your arm, uh, and I'm wondering how uh, how you're doing uh, health wise at this point going uh, going into the fight. Health wise, going into this fight, I'm I'm fantastic. You know. Um, Fighters train hard, you know, and we accumulate injuries over the years, but um, nothing that is going to stop me from destroying Alan Belcher 
uh, come next Saturday night. Uh, I've had a great camp, feel fantastic. Yes, you know, as I said, all fighters can carry a couple of injuries here and there, but there's nothing that's hin- going to hinder my performance and nothing on this planet that's going to help Alan Belcher. What uh, what what do you see uh, a win uh, uh, if you know if it were to come on uh, on Saturday? What does that do for you in the division? Well, obviously, it puts me back in the win column. It eradicates my last loss. You know, you're only as good as your last fight, and uh, you know, my last fight was a loss, and uh, I don't take that too well. You know, I want to I want to win fights. I'm, I'm a natural competitor, and um, you know, a win over Alan Belcher puts me back in the win column. Um, As I say, I get redemption from my last fight. It's a win over a top 10 opponent. And uh, it gets me back in the mix for the title shot. You know, that's what I want. And and as as long as there's blood, sorry, uh, light in my body, I will continue to try and get that title shot. You know, I'm I'm a a fighter. I want to be the world champion. And I ain't stopping until, as long as my body can do it, I'm going to keep trying. All right. Thank you, Michael. Um, Alan, what, uh, I guess along those same, uh, you know, thought process, what does a win, uh, over Michael do for you? <clears throat> yeah. It puts me in the, in the back in the top of, of the division and, and, uh, yeah, we're both coming off losses. We both have losses in our career, wins in our career. And now we're going to see who, who the best is out of us too. I don't care. I'm not really thinking about the ranks. I'm not thinking about what the fans think or uh, about how confident Michael is. I'm just thinking about beating him Saturday night. Let me just add to that. A win over me for Alan Belcher will be by far the biggest win of his pathetic career. Okay. There you go. No one gives a fuck about Alan Belcher. Uh, that's, that's right. So you better not lose to me, otherwise. otherwise hey, bro, I ain't gonna lose to you, mate. It's in the bag. All I've got to do is, it's a formality. I just gotta show up, slap your little face, take my check, and go home. Yeah, we'll see Saturday night. And we bloody will, mate, because you know it's coming, big man. Yes, I know exactly what's coming. Yeah. Ah, uh, Alan. Uh, you know, I guess uh, you know Michael. He. Um, always, you know, very, uh, very colorful. Always is going into his fights. Is it, uh, is it, is it going to be difficult, you know, separating, you know, any emotions, uh, you know, and, and staying, staying calm in the cage and not letting, you know, any, uh, any lingering emotions affect you. The question for me? Yeah. You're using too many big words there. You've got to simplify it for Alan. Yeah, no, it, no, it is emotional for me, and that's whenever I, that's whenever I perform at my highest. I have the most pressure on me. I'm the most nervous for this fight ever. The only fights that I've ever, I've ever lost are the are the fights that, that uh, I wasn't very excited for. So this one, um, I want it worse than any fight in my my whole career, and I'm focused on it, and I'll perform at my highest. Okay, thanks. Uh, and if I could, just one uh, one quick one for Chael. You uh, you you mentioned earlier how you think uh, John. Uh, you know, I don't know if you were talking just the light heavyweight division or or overall when you said uh, when you said best ever. But uh, you know, you've looked at him a lot leading up to this. Uh, you've been in the cage twice with Anderson. Um, who, who's the better of the two? You know, it's it's a tough sell, man. Uh, you know, he, he, look. Here's the reality with Anderson. I stomped that guy. And you can pick up his little arm as many times as you want and call him the winner. But the fact is I whipped his ass for 30 minutes. He got to jump on me for less than 30 seconds. He never knocked me down. I fell down. They say Anderson's the best pound for pound. He's not the best round for round. I have three 10-8 rounds in my entire career. I fought 49 men. Three rounds of my whole life are 10-8. That, that's gymnastics equivalent to a perfect 10. It doesn't happen in this sport. I doubt anyone on this call even has a 10-8 round. I got three of them. They're all against Anderson Silva. So if, if you think John and Anderson are even close, I will run through John because I ran through Anderson. Now, I don't think they're close. I think John is considerably uh, better than Anderson. But, but uh, you know... Sometimes I hear that I, I don't deserve this fight or I'm not the right guy, but then I hear that Anderson could beat him. But, well, you got to be kidding me. I stopped Anderson Silva twice. Okay. All right. Uh, thanks, Joe. Uh, thanks, you guys. We'll go next to Zeus King with MMAopinion.co.uk. 
yeah, my first question is for Chael. Um, your, uh, your catchphrase, beat me if you can, do you like that more to the Portland, Portland's grappler or to Taz from ECW? Let me start with giving you a little business advice. Do not have a website called blah, 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 dot com dot backslash UK. You need to simplify things. And secondly, I'm going to give that to the grappler. His name is Len Denton, and good for you for recognizing it. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate the business advice. You're very well. Uh, the, next one, the next one is for, uh, for Alan Belcher. Um, a, lot of, a lot of smack talk here from Michael uh, on one... Uh, video interview. He's uh, saying that he's he would love nothing better than to get a hold of you in your in his Muay Thai versus yours. What, uh, what do you say to that? Um, I welcome it. I mean, what am I supposed to say to it? I mean, my Muay Thai versus uh, Michael Bisping. I'm gonna sit here and say that I'm better than he is, but no one's gonna know until Saturday night. <laughs> Excellent. And then. Um, uh, finally, for um, for John Jones, do you ever look at, at at the world around you and and see all the haters and just you just dismiss it all? Because I mean, there's there's a lot of people who who just uh, you know focus on all your negatives and, and not your positives. Do you just get through every day just not worrying about what they think? Uh, yeah, I can't afford to worry about what people think. You know, I'm doing something that's uh, that's pretty, um, I think it's pretty extraordinary what I've done. And a lot of people aren't going to be happy for you. You know, my dad taught me that at a young age. You know, he he always said, you know, people people aren't going to be happy for you guys' success, you know. Um, and, and that's how it works. You know, I'm comfortable with it. Another thing is, you know, I've beaten a lot of people's uh, favorite fighter. You know, every training camp I have, I, I, I love my Twitter. And uh, Rampage has way more fans than I do. Uh, Peter Belfer has way more fans than I do. Shogun Hula has way more fans. Uh, Leoto, I think we're about neck and neck. But anyways, um, I'm the new guy, you know. So, um, of course, people want to see the new guy lose to the guy they've been loving for years. Uh, and when I beat, like, people's heroes back to back to back, it's very well. Uh, you know, people, and then, you know, the fast climb, people love to see uh, a guy gets built up to be broken down. I think that's why a lot of people enjoy my DWI so much. Um, so, you know, so it happens. I'm comfortable with it. Uh, when I come home to a beautiful house and a, my family being happy, it makes it all worth it. So, you know, people can hate me as much as they want. Um, my family's happy. I think I have the best job in the world, and they're watching the fight. So it, it all it all pays off. And they're, they're like free advertisement. You know, they talk about me all day and claim they hate me, but they can't stop tweeting me or thinking about me. So it's like free advertisement for me. So it, it's pretty cool. Thank you, everybody. I appreciate you uh, answering my questions. We'll go next to Brad Johnson with 1510 Radio. Hi, uh, yes. Uh, this question is for John Jones. Um since you in Boston in light of the uh, recent events, I know that your brother Chandler is a part of the New England Patriots. Do you plan to uh, uh, to dedicate or participate in any of um, uh, thoughts during the fight or before the fight uh, for the people of Boston? Um, no, no, I, I wasn't planning on it. To, you know, this is pretty subject, and i got to be pretty careful on how I work this, but, you know, a lot of times I think terrorists, they do things for, they do things to, to get, you know, and and um, I really don't, you know, where I, I feel terrible about the loss of that, you know, people's lives, and I think it was a terrible thing. I try not to, I try not to talk about the bad things that happens in the world. Um, because that's that's what the terrorists want. They want to be on on all these news channels. They want to be talked about, and they want to be famous, and and they they want this glorification for what they did. And I just don't I don't think talking about it. Um, I think talking about it is exactly what they want. So the way I deal with it is I pray for the families, and uh, and that's it. I pray for the families, and and uh, you know, and and that's about it. 
Hey, uh, thank you so much for that. And then, um, John, just a second, uh, a quick, quick follow up question. Um, do you train any different for, uh, defense titles, uh, in your camp or do you go into it? Um, it's just another, it's just a, another fight. Um, I go into it as it's just another fight. You know, I, I feel like I've had the toughest work schedule out of anyone in the UFC. Um, I, in, in the past several years, you know, if you look at all the guys I fought, um, every fight of mine has been the number one contender for two years now. Um, so I've, I've learned to get my emotions out of the way and just to train extremely hard and um, and approach it like another fight. Now, when I say it's another fight, obviously there's tactics that are always different. For example, the jiu-jitsu that I've been working on in this camp um, and fighting another southpaw. Um, I've gotten a lot better against southpaw. You know, Vitor fight, I had one arm, and this time I have two arms, so I'm excited to see how my stuff perform, because they say, you know, as good as your last fight, and, and uh, I felt like I was better than that. Um, but anyways, um, yeah, I, I'm working different tactics, but it's just another fight, another number one contender, another uh, one of the toughest guys in the world. Okay, thank you. And we'll go next to Franklin McNeil with ESPN. And my question is for John. Uh, first of all, how are you, man? I haven't talked to you in a little bit. Good, Franklin. Good to hear your voice. All right, man. Hey, uh, I, I just want to know where you are uh, mentally at this point in your career, your motivation. Um, you know, you're the champion, uh, and obviously you want to keep that title. I want to know, uh, and you talk a little bit about your future without going into specifics, but is there more that you fight for now than, than just holding on to the belt? And what does, what does this fight, uh, what motivates you going into this fight? Yeah, I definitely fight for more uh, than just the belt. You know, I, uh, I have two brothers that are in the NFL, and uh, I think what drives me is not to be uh, the lesser brother, not to be the brother who... Uh, didn't quite make it, or the one who needs to borrow money 10 years from now. Um, so that, that really, really drives me to, um, to show that a UFC fighter can have uh, the type of success that an NFL player could have, if not more. So that's one thing that drives me. Another thing is my kids. I have, uh, I have lots of kids, <laughs> so I can't let them, I can't let them down. You know what I mean? Um, and um, another thing that drives me is um, knowing that I inspire a lot of people. I, I get that a lot, and it's something that um, I I have a lot of pride in. That's why I tweet a lot of motivational things and try to be positive. Because you know I I caught one of guys like Tony Robbins and and all these different motivational speakers, and they changed my life. They changed my psychology. And if I can quote something and say something that makes someone better. That that means a lot to me to be able to change someone's lives. I feel like that's what God's working on me to do, and I won't be able to do that if I don't have a platform. So, being the champion means more than just having the belt. Um, it, it, you know, I have lots of purpose outside of myself. You mentioned earlier about those who who root against you for whatever reason. Does that motivate you as well? Uh, does the haters motivate me? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, in a way they do. You know, I try to focus on the people who love me, but, um, uh, you know, sometimes I find myself scanning through my Twitter just to see, you know, who was hating on me for that day because it, it, it motivates me. It definitely motivates me. It, um, you know, it, it's funny because I get harassed every fight, and then after the fight, you know, all those guys that go away, I don't know where, you know, they just they eat all their words. Um, so it motivates me to just keep proving people wrong. And, you know, I have the psychology of just keeping my nose to the dirt and, uh, and minding my own business and, uh, and just outworking people. Okay, hey, thanks a lot, guys. Letting success speak for itself. No and, we, and we only have time for a few more questions. Please press star 1 if you would like to be placed in the queue. And we'll go next to Rich Klein with FightDay.com. Hey, Chell. Um Having gone through the Ultimate Fighter now with John, I was just wondering, how has your perception changed about John himself, and do you regret anything you've said about maybe his arrest or the 151 cancellation? 
uh, I don't regret anything ever. But uh, as far as my perception of John, uh, I mean, it, it changed in about 30 seconds. Uh, but the first 30 seconds I was around him, uh, I mean, he's a good guy. He's a very nice guy. You know, I, I hear people that, that insult him a lot. And I'm going, well, wait, wait a second. This guy's the world champion. This guy's achieved what, what everybody else is, is dreaming of. I think people should copy John uh, more than attempt to correct him. He cared a lot about his team. He was, uh, took coaching very seriously. He was on time every time. And, uh, and he inspired a, a bunch of guys that, that, that really needed it. You know, he threw, I, I cared about every one of those guys. I didn't care if they were on John's team or mine. And, uh, and I got to know him. And they, they looked up to him, and, and he was there for him. And, uh, you know, I think, uh, I think he should be credited for that. He's, he was a nice person, and there, you know, there's not a lot else I can say. Uh, as far as a competitive standpoint, uh, I think I can beat him. I, I love watching him. I think he's very good. Uh, but I think I can beat him. You know, I would like to say this, since I know the, the questions are winding down. I'm a big fan. Uh, aside from being a fighter, I'm a fan, and it's very hard to focus on John because I am dying to see uh, a Bisping and Belcher fight. You know, I want to see the Bisping uh, that beat the hell out of me for three rounds take on the Belcher that beat the hell out of uh, Pelharis for three rounds. I think Belcher's performance against Pelharis was one of the single best performances of the entire year. And uh, if those two guys, uh, the right guys, show up, uh, it, it's going to be awesome. If somebody asked this thing about uh, having some injuries earlier, uh, and he quite candidly said, yeah, I got some injuries, but they're not going to stop me. Just to tell you a little about my, Mike Bisping, I was on the set of UFC Tonight uh, one month ago. He shows up with stitches in his head, grabs a pair of scissors out of the drawer, and removes his own stitches before he goes on set because uh, he thought they want to look good. So if you think that, that Michael Bisping needs to feel good to perform, you're wrong. Muchas gracias. And we'll go next to Michael Cohen with the Syracuse Post Standard. Hey, John, I'm curious, is there a different kind of buzz around this fight at all, given that it's a little bit closer to home? Have you noticed more of your buddies from the upstate area are into it because it's on the East Coast and as close to home as you can get right now? Uh, I could ask the question again. I'm sorry. No, no problem. I'm just wondering if with this fight being as close to home as you can get at this point, if there's a little bit more buzz around it from some of your friends at home, have you noticed that the East Coast is, is a little bit more uh, into it because it's as close as you can get to your home state at this point? Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, I kind of have that feeling that I had when I was going to fight Shogun. You know, I was just extremely mobile and, uh, and dedicated. You know, my weight right now, I'm like 216 because I'm training all the time and after I eat I go work out right after to burn the calories off there's like a fire that I have to uh, compete well up in that arena you know my friends are not going to be there front row and a lot of people who can't afford to go will be able to drive down and, and get in that arena this time so yeah I have a, I have a not pressure but I have a, uh, an eagerness to compete a really high level. You know, a lot of people say, I want the John Jones that fought against Shogun to come back. And uh, I'll be in the same arena, you know, so I'll try to put that same energy and effort uh, into just attacking and being aggressive and uh, being smarter and competing clean and, and, and nice and dominant. Thanks, John. That does conclude our question and answer session. I would have...